Hi there, welcome to Bustanet. Yes, this is a getting started with show. We are going to Melbourne City. It's the A League. Yes, this don't confuse Melbourne City with Melbourne Victory. Melbourne Victory are the more illustrious neighbours. They won the title three times. Melbourne City have only finished third. That's the best uh, they've done, and that was last season. And uh, now, if you take, if you manage this club, it's a big challenge because you're you're managing a you're in a league which has dropped off a bit, right? So it used to be one of the top four leagues in Asia. Um, behind leagues like Iran's league, you've got the K League, the J League. Um, now China is picked up, so it's not one of the top four leagues. Um, and I think that they've fallen off a bit. You know, I think now the A League is even behind Thailand's league, um, probably on par with Malaysia's league. That's how how far they've dropped. I mean, the quality of the clubs, the facilities is better than a lot of the clubs in Asia, right? Um, this team has got decent facilities, but um, it's 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 a challenge, right? So you, what you want to do is, you, this is a big challenge because you're playing in a nation where you want to raise the nation's reputation as well. So so if you can do well with Melbourne City and you can get them into the Champions League, you're actually going to lift this entire nation's ranking up along the way. So you're going to give, yeah, you basically, it's a mass, it's a wonderful challenge to take up, you know, managing in Australia. The only issue with uh, managing in Australia is uh, you've, you've got to look at the rules of the league, and the rules of the league aren't like uh, typical rules anywhere else, like maybe in England or Syria. No, it's not. It's more like the league, the rules that we face in the S League or even in, in the MLS. Um, you've got a, uh, you've got basic stuff like you go to your. You find out the rules by going to this section and then you come over here to rules. Uh, you've got designated players. They're exempted uh, from a salary cap. Yes, there's a salary cap, £137,000. So when you come into this club, basically, you can't sign too many players. So you, you need. So if you come into this club and you go like, oh shit, man, now I've got to go and scout players. What am I going to do? Before you even do that, come in here and go to registration. Find out how many players you already have. So here, our current squad size is 22. So we can only afford to sign one more player. That's it. Uh, you can sign one more player. Alternatively, you mean your squad size can be, you can, you can have as many players as you want. But you're going to be registering only 23 players for your team. So uh, what you can do is, you can go out there and, uh, well, you can go out there and, uh, um, Bring in more players if you want it. You can scout them. You can uh, open the doors to everybody. I'll show you how you can do that. But before you can even do that, you've going to have to look at your staff because your staff need some attention. First thing you want to do, go get yourself a cheese scout, get yourself another scout. Now, how you do this is important. You go to staff search, new search, uh, pick uh, your staff level, um, Get make sure that his uh, nationality is Australian. Why? Because if you want to get a scout and you're looking for a scout, um, it's easier for you to... If, if he's Australian, then you've got nation knowledge. You've got knowledge level for Australia, so it's faster for you. And the other thing is, uh, when you're signing staff, you're going to have a lot of staff that are English. Their wages are high. It's like shit high. Six, seven thousand pounds per week. That's what they want. You, they, they want more money than you as a coach. Okay, seriously. The, the English want seven thousand pounds a week. You get about fifteen thousand pounds a month. So yes, don't sign any of the English. So you got players like David Platt. Um, you've got quite a number of illustrious um, Englishmen who are coaching in Australia. What you want are the Irish. The Irish come cheap. <laughs> I hate to say this, but you, you, seriously, you find the Irish are cheap. You, you, they, they're just as good. So you're looking at coaches that can you can hire that are not so unaffordable. So you're going to get a, at least one more coach in. You're going to have to get at least two scouts in. Why two scouts? You can go for three, but analyzing opposition is one. And then you're going to have one guy you're going to be... Asking him to scout or study, permanently scouting Australia and New Zealand because these are players that you want to bring into the club, right? So you've got youngsters that might come in. Now, the second thing you want to do is have an open day. <laughs> now, you see all this, all this uh, Senegal, blah, 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 blah. You know, you, you have a list. It's all irrelevant. I mean, for me personally speaking, you're probably going to be better off doing it two ways. One, uh, you can't, you can't, 
you can't scout anyone, you see, because there are currently no recruitment staff employed by the club. So until you get somebody coming in to help you recruit, okay, you can't send a scout out, you can't have assignments. All you can do is this, you can do player search, big, sorry, you got a new search rather, add a condition, homegrown status, Australia. Then add another condition, value is zero. Now, if you've done all that, then go to pick, choose attributes. Uh, I will go for determination, bravery, natural fitness. Bring everything down to about 10. Now, we've got a whole bunch of players. Uh, oh, whole, you know, you've got a really big bunch of players. Now, naturally, we don't want all of them coming. So, jack determination up, jack bravery up, jack natural fitness up to 12. Now, there's, now this is a much more manageable uh, group of players. What you can do is you know you go to this whole group and transfer offer them trials for two weeks don't forget this is like an llm safe every staff every staff that you sign has got knowledge levels of australia so you even in the recruitment team you can even sign an analyst with nation knowledge level for australia so you, you don't want to be you don't want to hamstring yourself so here we got edit um Add condition for scouting, nation knowledge level, right? So we've got nation knowledge level is at least 100% for Australia. And then you start looking for scouts. Now, naturally, this is going to take a longer time. So what you do is you judge playability. You bring it down to 13. Now we've got a couple. Um, bring it down. As you can see, um, there's not too many, but we've got a couple of sports analysts and data analysts. Knowledge level is 10. Um, you can be a bit more, you know, you can add like potential ability in, in as well. And then you've got a couple of coaches here, right here. Um, Kieran Lugo. So he is okay. You know, it'd be nice if he had some determination as well. But it's not vital. Uh, so we want to get scouts in as quickly as we can. You need at least one or two to help you with uh, improving your knowledge level and, you know, having access to more players. So this is something that you want to be doing early. So you, you this is something you you have to set, um, get out, uh, do right out of the gate. Now, what about training? Training is going to be quite simple. I don't plan to be make my training very complicated. So I've taken the uh, preseason routines. I've just added attacking corners, attacking free kicks. I just add one. So I'm just going to leave the S man to manage everything, and then I'm just going to add a, a session every time so here uh this is pre-season light early physical so i'm just going to change physical to um endurance and then i'm going to change this to endurance confirm and then we'll come into this day and then i'll just so this is what you can do you can you can do this all for the whole month if you wanted to you can take over the sessions like you know and as you can see there's a lot of sessions all i gotta do is add a few more here and that's it so this is technical chance creation so i'll probably add a ch another chance creation ball retention ball distribution split it across here at one um at one uh, set piece training over here i uh, don't fill up all the slots maybe use three slots per week just fill three more slots and use three more slots so that i get enough rest days and where there's a match like this at the late i will not have a match practice here I'll just remove this match right this is just too much so i will probably put in um i'll probably put in a defensive shadow play and attacking shadow play one more set and then probably an attacking corner so it's that's how i would set it up so it wouldn't be too complicated now let's take a look at our team now the team when they come in of course cohesion is all going to be sh going out i mean basically everything is shite so you've got a lot of friendlies there's a lot of matches for you to you know, get accustomed to your team so generally uh what i would do is I'll, I'll start scouting right scout inviting all those people to come in play them in your friendlies as well see how i mean it's, it's a really quick way for you to figure things out there's a certain things that you want to look at the first there's a lack of quality in that mean goal lack of quality in their left back right back so you can see this right we've got a lot of issues with this team um it's going to be a major challenge for you to pull something out of the hat uh, with this team let's now look at their attributes and try and understand what this team is all about so first up um is there is there any point in doing a league comparison yeah you can do a league comparison to see how you fit so like um one thing i don't know if you guys remember but this is normally what i used to do 
I'll go like physical jumping reach for all the strikers in the land, right? So the jumping reach is about 13, right? So let's look at mentals, uh, defenders, positioning. What's the number that uh, makes them good defenders here? 13. So if I wanted to be lazy, I'll come up with a number called 13 and say, okay, fine. To be the best in the A-League, I'm looking at 13. Actually, 12 to 13 will be okay. So let's look at our squad. Jumping reach for our defenders. Uh, let's see what we, what kind of tactics we can come up with, right? So uh, this is going to be really fast. So let's see jumping reach. Uh, 13, 14, 12, 13, 16. Okay, not too bad. Concentration, not very good. Uh, he's more like a defensive midfielder. So jumping reach is about 12, 14. We've got one centre back here. Work rate, mm, a bit decent with pace. Oh, let's, this is not important. What about his anticipation or anticipation not very good? So not very good at reading the game. Both of them not not that fantastic at reading the game. Uh well, this is a pretty pretty okay team, but uh, not very strong. Uh we've got Ayoko Rock. This guy is a half decent left back and a cent he's a centre back, a left back and a DM, right? So he's got you got some a lot of options. Scott Jamieson, uh, not a bad uh, looks like he's gonna be the star of the team. Okay, and okay. What about strikers up top? So defenders, so so maybe they need the DM base system. I I I'm looking at this team and going okay, fine. There not a lot of options at the back. Uh, in attack we've got we basically we've got three strikers. Okay, so we've got three strikers in this team, and then uh, attacking mids. Uh, we've got this guy can play in a wider position and this guy pretty strong wide players and one strong wide player um, That's it. They've only got one strong wide player This guy can play on the flanks and then again this guy can play on the flanks. So we can play a 4-3-3 A 4-5-1 what looks like a three striker for me. You can play a three striker formation. You can play a white tree You can play a narrow tree um, The issue is at the back now. Okay, so it's either we play with a DM or we play with a 4-4 Right, so we try to circumvent the problem by playing uh, solid banks. So is there any cover in the defender area? So we look at the we got Richie the lead. He can play as a fullback on the right. Okay, so we got a, we got one more fullback on the left. We got two more fullbacks. So we got um okay. So essentially we've got we've got like two fullbacks left and right. The only problem is defenders. So hopefully now now we look at the scouting. The, all the play, all those chaps coming into the club, <laughs> priority will probably be a defender because we we shot on the defender front, right? So we got room for one more player. We got to make the decision on this player is absolutely critical. So DMs, if we have a lot, um, I mean, it's it's they're not fantastic, but they're still doable. Okay, then we've got uh midfielders, and then we got our attackers. So looks like. The priority for scouting is definitely going to be um, central defender. In goal, pretty average. Now let's look at the use. Okay, the use, the, immediately I'm only looking at this. High potential. We've got this boy here, Nathaniel Atkinson. Defender can play on the right. Long way to go. Workload is r light training. Then we look at the coaches in this department. Okay, not too bad. Okay, so he's uh he's uh what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the squad, you're gonna look at uh the youth, uh then you're gonna adjust their intensity to double. Okay, so his injury risk might go up, but this is preseason. So let's see. So all this is light. Um you wanna manage them as well, but who is gonna come into your main team? This guy, not he can't. Then we've got this player, he's half decent. Then we've got Dylan Pereira. Okay, defender right. Okay, he might he I might even have to use him right. So this player he might go to the first team, but he's defender, so we're gonna give him a fullback on support. So he works on these mental attributes, space, stamina, uh, strength is almost non-existent. <laughs> so first things first, let's work on your strength for the rest of your natural life. Okay, so he's got to start working on this. Alright, so Dylan Pereira works on strength. Um, this this youth training team, is this their training schedule? Look at the calendar. Uh, this is uh, our main... No, this is the youth team's training. Yeah, so what you do is, here you're going to have physical resistance because he's going to work on strength. So this team has got 
physical resistance. Okay. So the, the youngsters, what you're going to do is you're going to have a lot of this physical endurance and physical resistance. Because we know we have some, some of our players need some help. So you, what you do is you keep doing this for all the schedules. Okay, that's done. Now we look at our youth team again. Uh, who else can play in the first team? We got Luke Gallo. We are looking now for a central defender. Michelle Graham, not good enough. Okay, so position. No, we only have one central defender. Now it becomes really important for us to give, uh, to hope that our scouts can go out there and find us a player that can fit into our our team. So some of these players, we're going to have to try and give them a chance to play and see how they do. So how do we do in terms of our matches? So how are we going to play? So we got, I'm going to have to play all these games before I get into, oh my goodness, our first game is going to be against Melbourne Victory. <laughs> this is going to be a big challenge. So we've done pretty well. Um, we got a win over Melbourne City. Uh, here we go. Uh, this is uh, Griffiths. Uh, we got our second goal in the 89th minute. Good work. And then uh, he was found on mark at the edge of the box and we scored that goal. Uh, I'll, I will go through this tactic very soon. I've got two versions of the tactic. I actually like this because uh, essentially what we're doing in our tactic is we're playing a, f a flat 4 3 3. I mean, playing a 4 3 3. It's not really a flat 4 3 3. Uh, then we've got, we also beat Central Coast Mariners. Uh, What's the scoreline here? This was a 3 1, and then we had this nice goal. So we got the goalkeeper. So we got the split block. This, this guy is using the OI, right? So he's going to close that guy down. We just so which gets the ball. Beranga, now watch what happens. We got the same thing that happens in my liquid systems, right? 1, 2, 3. We got a chance for a through pass. Boom. So he scored, and then we were off and running. We beat them 3 1. Nobody expected it. And then uh, we played Melbourne Victory. Same story, but this time again, very pleased with our performance. Uh, we created a few clear cut chances, and then uh, so did they, but they couldn't bury their chances. We did much better. Our player of the match was the keeper, uh, and we won courtesy of a penalty. Uh, like, I was just very happy with our performance. So I've got two versions of this tactic. Um, in FM 18, I called it Knights Bridge, in FM 9. Uh, 19 I'm calling it Knight's Gate so it's a slightly different version now um, I've tweaked this slightly to for my own team because for this team because there's a one in the FM Tactics handbook which is slightly different it's it's meant to punch teams right it's meant to it's, this is modified it's not the same one in the book I've modified it for this team because I want them to hit teams from deep so what I've done is I've got hit early crosses. I've got the overlap on these two. So these guys are going to be slightly higher in possession of the ball. And then um, I'm trying to hit teams over, because we've got an advanced forward. So I want to hit teams. I want to get this guy away early. I'm also using a Mazala and Carrello because honestly, um, I know some people say don't use it with wingers, but I love their positioning. Their positioning is to stay a bit wider. Now, if I use flat, three flat like this, What's going to happen is they're all going to be so close together. They're going to be millimeters away from each other. So it's very congested. But these two roles, because they stay wider, they give the DLP a bit more space. So sometimes what I notice in the game is these two guys are quite close. These two guys are quite close. This guy's relatively free. So we stretch teams as well in the process. And I, I, and I really like the way that, uh, that, that dynamic works in the game. So uh, we, we apply... I mean, I would... I would normally apply a split block on this guy as well, close down more, tackle harder. Uh, I also got an OI working on him. Then I got inside for shoot less, close down, mark tighter. He has got close down more, mark tighter. This guy closes down more. This guy doesn't do any closing down. I want him relatively free. Then DLP, then F, the fullback has got nothing on him. Generally, what I would like to do, it will depend on the team I'm playing with, right? So sometimes I look at the players and I go, oh, you're not good enough to pass the ball. So, so I do this with him. So I tell him, you keep the ball, don't do anything fancy. Uh, this guy runs right where the ball gets further forward, so he's going to be much closer to this group. Uh, we've got an overlap right instruction on this player. Now, this overlap, once in a while, it's it's okay. I, I, I keep it because I use the overlap instruction, not because I want him to overlap, but generally because I, I want him to uh, be closer to the action so we can keep the ball. i got to be worried about balls over the top, naturally. Uh, distribute the centre-backs. This is a 
this is in the system. Though, if it if I'm faced with the high press, I'll remove this. I won't play with it. So it's very dependent on the teams that I play. It's not something I do automatically. Right, high defensive line line engagement. Again, this is something that I don't do automatically. So I, I look at the games and I go, okay, fine. Uh, maybe this game, I want to play with a standard defensive line. But generally, it's the standard defensive line, standard line engagement, or I go with a high line of engagement. I stick around this, these, these settings. Now, the interesting thing about Knight's Gate and the interesting thing about this uh, team is, okay, if I play it like this, there's another way of, of playing it as well. And I did this in the game against Melbourne Victory. So against Melbourne Victory, I did slightly differently. So I kept the same tactic, same way of doing it, except now I told these guys to play as inverted wing backs. So what would happen is uh, in possession of the ball, we get a W going again. So we get this, uh, we get all these areas all really nicely covered with passing triangles. And we kept the ball. So our possession numbers would shoot up to 67%, which is obscene. Okay. Uh, and uh, we keep the ball and we kept it away from Melbourne Victory for large periods of time. It was, I was like really happy with how we played against this team. Because these we were the underdogs in this team. There was, um, I mean, did, we didn't expect to win this game, right? So this is Melbourne City. This is, Mel, this is uh, Melbourne Victory. <laughs> Look at us in midfield. We kept the ball in our own half. So the whole goal for me was to keep the ball away from Melbourne Victory because Melbourne Victory on paper are a lot more stronger than me. So, But if I can keep the ball away from them and I can use the ball, then I can do something with it. So that, that's, that's the, that was the whole plan. Uh, first half, we were okay. And I mean, I did change it to a... The first half, we were playing with the, um, the non-inverted wingback system, right? The second half, once we got the goal, I went straight into my inverted wing back system and that's it. Midfield became ours. So we kept the we kept the ball to ourselves. It's really good at keeping the ball. So, so generally what I did was uh I if I were to manage this team, it'd be very simple. I'd go for goals with this, and I'll keep the ball with this. Now you can also go for goals with this system by going inverted wing back on support and inverted wing back on attack. But then I would change this guy to an inside forward and support. So I get this guy running through the Carrillo, just you know, holding the line, shuttling the ball. He's just playing like a rugby player. You know, the ball, the player comes, he just throws the ball behind him. You now you go. So that's how he's gonna play, and uh, it's a, it's, it's gonna be really simple. And the players I use in this system, well, Bratan doesn't play as a Mazala because he doesn't have a single ounce of flair in his body. So we gotta go with Berengue. Uh He's got flair. Now his tackling is very low. This is the reason why we gotta be very careful about this role. Um, the other player, the one that I signed was this guy, Mitch Nichols. So Mitch Nichols can also play here in this position. Once again, this player doesn't have very good decisions. So sometimes he's going to make the odd mistake. So, so this, this, but this is the only other player I could find that was willing to join the club. So I, 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 he's just cover for our player, Baranga. Because, you know, in the, the way this game is set up, right? Players are going to go MIA or they get injured. And this is a very high price to play. In defense, we've got two central defenders. We've got Good, we've got Shigwenwell. And then we've also got somebody on the bench called Delbridge. All of them are viable. Delbridge is a bit slow. Um, out on the right flank, we thought a shadow of a doubt he'd be starting with Richie Delate most of the games. Vitsovic is going to be on the right flank. That's, that's it. It's an inside forward playing on the right flank. Okay, fine, you know. Um, we don't really have that many options in attack so but this guy can play as an inside forward he comes in he, he does good distribution with the ball he's got decent decision making and he's definitely has the eye for the pass so playing as an inside forward and support is also another option the only downside with playing him as an inside forward and support is probably the fact that you know you, you, he's we gotta ask whether he's gonna last 90 minutes or the course of the season so we're gonna have to think about uh, other players that we might want to bring through the ranks. Now you got Yusuf Ahmad, he can also play there. Now that's going from him to Yusuf Ahmad is a big change, right? So there are players in this team um, that we can turn to. I've turned to them a few times this season. Uh, so youngsters, mm, there aren't too many in the scene and the youth squad to play these systems, right? So we got we got Luca Portelli, he's very young. I, I'd have used him, Najarin. Um, and uh, the other player that is not too bad is this guy, uh, Kieran Bacchus. Now, this is the other Mazala that you can use. So, you've got like 
Mazalas, we, we have enough cover for Mazalas. It's the reason why I didn't go and get any more players. Mitch Nichols, I like this player. Something tells me, he's, in preseason, his form was hot. So he was really playing the system very well. Uh, out on the left flank, maybe Luca Portelli, still very young, 17 years old. We gotta, I'm not suggesting that you have to play the youngsters because this, there's, a, there's a kind of a cost to this because the attribute spread is like a lot right, between the two groups. So uh, we might want to rotate them, you know, for, uh, try and secure a result then bring them on. You know, just, just pray to God that you don't concede. Uh, what I like about this is, you know, some people might be wondering, what the hell are you doing with the AF? Listen, we are the underdog most of the time. So, uh, I like to hit uh, the early crosses because uh, if we hit the early crosses, this guy can get away and score. Um, with both systems, even with this system, he can get away. This We got fullback, we got wing back on support and a fullback on support. We overlap left and overlap right. Um, yeah, can still work. Uh, Schedule-wise, Pretty easy. We we we, did, we played pretty well in preseason. I was very happy with our performances in preseason. Now in preseason, what I really pay attention to is off the ball movement. I don't care what the scoreline is. I just want off the ball movement. I want to see how my tactic can play on the pitch. And the boys have done pretty well. And uh, I think this is going to be a very interesting save with Melbourne City. If you get a chance to manage this club and you you play this club. You got to look out for the derby matches with Melbourne victories. It's going to be a lot of fun. Well, uh, I hope you enjoyed this edition of Getting Started With. This is Melbourne City Football Club. What can you do with this club? Can you win the A-League? Can you bring them to the Champions League and win the whole caboodle? Right. Go and one day hopefully meet Real Madrid in the Club World Championships. I mean, that's the dream if you marry somebody. I mean, I, that's my dream when I manage Geelang International in the S-League. I wanted to bring them to the Champions League to face Real Madrid. Never really happened because I got bored of the save because of the S League. Uh, but I hope this, I think the A League has a bit more potential. There's definitely more going on here than in the S League. So if you have any questions, please look me up on Twitter at Bustanet or Addicted2FM.com. My website, once again, I want to thank all my patrons for their continued support of this channel and make this kind of show as possible for the rest of the community. You guys take care. Have a good one. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye.